Today we're going to talk about scaling of data. It's a feature that's used to take input and output data and scale them so the network can process them uh, better. In a previous lecture, we talked about bias neurons. And if you remember, what they did was output a 1. So our bias neuron that we're calling neuron number 0 <coughs> outputs a 1. And so it's connected to every other neuron. So pick an arbitrary neuron in the network, and it has other weights coming in it. So this is neuron number, I don't know, number 8. So we have weight 8, 1 going from neuron 0. Sorry, that should be neuron 0 to neuron number 8. And then neuron number 8 has an activation function that's tan H. And if you look at the net input of this neuron, U, without the bias neuron, um, it looks like this. So you put in the, the sum of all of the weighted inputs and you get some net input going in, and then you read out f of u as the value of that network, or of that neuron output. What the bias neuron, remember, does is it shifts this curve over one way or the other so that we can get a non-zero output for a zero input, or a bigger value, or for a different value of u. Because the plot of this is essentially f of u plus some shift, so it should be minus, minus some shift over to that level there. <clears throat> so bias neurons are really important in allowing neurons to process information and output values uh, over a larger range. Another important feature is scaling of data. And this, the first thing we'll talk about is output neurons and output data. And to give an example of how this works, let's say that we're talking about a robot arm that can rotate about that point there. And you apply a torque, a rotary moment torque here, and the arm's going to move, and we measure the movement with an angle theta. So theta, in this example, can be between 0 and 360 degrees. So let's say we want to create a neural network that takes in torque values, let's say a current torque value at time t and a torque value a hundredth of a second ago and a torque value of two hundredths of a second ago. So this would be like a torque time history, how the torque changes with time. And we want to create a neural net that would output theta at the current time. for example. So, and let's say this output neuron has a tan H activation function. Tan H can only output values between plus and minus one. But yet we want this neuron to output a theta value somewhere between zero and 360 degrees. Obviously that does not work. So a fix for that is to scale theta values to be, be between minus 1 and 1. So we scale theta, the output data, so that it's not between 0 and 360. We divide so that it is scaled between minus 1 and 1. <clears throat> the software that we'll be using, NeuralWorks, uh, 
does this automatically with something called the min-max table. And as you watch the lecture for NeuralWorks, I'll talk about checking a box that tells it to use min-max data. And what that does is it does this scaling for you. So that's why you would scale input data. I'm sorry, output data. How about input data? So this is <coughs> the same strategy <coughs> of scaling the data, but the reason for scaling input data comes from this. So let's say we have a, a neuron, let's just say an arbitrary neuron in the first hidden layer. So here's our neuron. It's one of many in a hidden layer. And then here's the input layer. And all of those input neurons send values through weighted inputs. to this neuron in the input layer, or in the hidden layer. Let's say this one has a tan H activation function. <clears throat> its net input is the sum of all the weights coming into that neuron times the activation values. And then we calculate its output, and I'm not numbering things here, we're just talking about this neuron here. It's Output is x as f of u. <clears throat> and let's say that all of these inputs that get passed through then become the x's coming out, x1, x2, which is how this network works. And you add all those up here, and you get a large number. Because the inputs could be potentially large. Let's say all of, <coughs> excuse me, all of the inputs range between 0 and 10. And then you have weights on the order of, let's say, 1, for example. Then you could get a really big number as this net input. And then what happens to that? That goes into the activation function, tan h. And that big number u is way over here. And you're going to get a 1 as an output. Because you're, you're way over here on the branch. And notice that changing the net input one way or the other is not going to affect the output very much. And in fact, changing any of these weights going into that neuron will move the net input to the left or right, but we won't get much of a change in the output. And this neuron is said to be saturated. It's not responsive to inputs or the weights. Well, that's not good because that means you change an input and you still get the same output. You change a weight, you still get the same output. Also, if you remember backprop learning, let's say we want to train that neuron backprop learning uses the delta via this formula. And it uses the derivative of that neuron. And we're talking about the ith neuron being that one that we're looking at up here. Look at this key feature. This has the slope of the activation function at the net input for that neuron. So if this net input is big, then we're over here on the tan h <coughs> function. And look at the slope. The slope is very small or zero. So f prime is 
almost zero. That means the error delta is going to be zero or really small. And then the wait update is not going to happen. because it depends upon that <coughs> error delta, which for this case is small. So if the neuron is saturated, it's not responsive to the inputs or the weights, and learning can't happen. So we're just essentially stuck. And the solution to this is scale the input data to be between plus and minus one. And then use small initial weights. And what does that do? It means that we've scaled the data so we know we get somewhere between minus one and one. And if the weights are all small, the net input going in here and in here is not going to be large, and so the neuron will not be saturated because we have small values coming in for the weights. <clears throat> and neural works does this scaling also with the min max table. And built in. And again, there's that checkbox I talked about. You'll see that when you watch the lecture on NeuralWorks about how you want to check this box to turn on the min max table and everything will work great. So three things we've we reviewed the idea of a bias neuron. And in fact, there's a checkbox in that, in NeuralWorks for that. We've talked about the min max table which scales the input data and it scales the output target values used in the training. So all networks will do the bias and the min-max. For more information about preparing data for neural nets. Uh, after this lecture, you'll see a secondary lecture. Uh, let's write that out. and a timestamp to start from. And that will show you the second half of another recorded lecture that talks about preparing data for neural nets. It also it reviews the scaling and other issues of how to set up data, how to include data for neural nets.